This is AMTV in colour. Oh. Over the last 40 years, viewers across the world have come to take colour television for granted. Whether it's watching your favourite drama or sporting event, or even just catching up on the day's news, the use of colour helps us feel a closer connection to what's been shown on the screen and has allowed us to see our world in all its beauty. However, there was a time when colour television was a pipe dream, never mind a daily constant. And in the UK, when full-time colour services were just getting underway, there were a few months in the early 1970s in which it all went horribly wrong. By the time television started becoming more of a common household object during the 1950s, audiences had only been able to consume colour entertainment in the cinemas, MGM's adaptation of The Wizard of Oz in 1939 being one of the earliest groundbreakers for colour cinema, featuring the iconic scene in which Dorothy leaves her monochrome world behind for the colourful landscapes of Oz. The Americans cracked colour television in the early 50s, and the Japanese soon followed by the turn of the 60s. The two UK broadcasters, the BBC and ITV, were eager to get their own full colour services up and running, but several barriers stood in their way. First and foremost, the decision to launch such a service had to be assessed and approved by government, and secondly, the cost of colour equipment, and the studios equipped to handle them, was enormously expensive back in the early 60s. In 1966, the BBC were finally given the go-ahead by government to launch its first full colour service, over the recently launched BBC Two. After months of preparations, in getting all of the equipment fine-tuned and installed, BBC Two began transmitting in colour on the 1st of July 1967. Initially, only selected programmes were shown in colour, the rest of the lineup remaining in monochrome for the time being. Highlights included the broadcast of Wimbledon, in which viewers could finally see the green grass of the tennis courts in all their glory. BBC Two would launch its full-time colour service on the 2nd of December 1967, and just two years later, on the 15th of November 1969, BBC One and various ITV regions began their own full-time colour broadcasts, ushering in a vibrant new era of British television. Adoption of colour TVs amongst audiences was slow to begin with, naturally due to the raised cost of a capable receiver, but those who could afford one, or those exposed to it, were transfixed as their favourite programmes could now be seen in a whole new way. But just shy of one year after ITV began full colour transmissions, disaster was approaching. As mentioned previously, the transition to colour TV in the UK was not a smooth or swift one. Not only did the technology have to be perfected, but the cost and difficulty to convert studios for colour recordings, as well as various technical problems with the cameras, was causing tensions to rise. Responding to these issues, the Association of Cinematograph, Television and Allied Technicians, or the ACTT, laid out that they believed workers who were tasked with handling all this new equipment should receive a 5% pay rise. The ACTT were no strangers into waging war with various television companies and broadcasters to see that their members were paid appropriately, arguably striking their greatest victory in 1979. In this instance, however, after failed negotiations with ITV, on the 13th of November 1970, colour recording and transmissions across the ITV network stopped. The ITV colour strike, as it came to be known, has a rather unusual place in industrial action history. Workers did down tools but it didn't lead to the ITV network going off the air, rather preventing it from showcasing its new colour programmes. Essentially, workers did continue to film and record programmes for transmission, but not in colour. Shows would now revert to being filmed in black and white, even using colour cameras to do so. You see, early colour TV cameras had four lenses. Three of them focused on the primary colours, red, blue and green, whereas the fourth carried what's known as the luminance signal, which essentially is a high quality monochrome image. All four pictures filmed on these lenses would then normally be synchronised and combined to create the final full colour recording set for transmission. Technicians, however, simply turned off the colour lenses, only capturing black and white footage. Even programmes that had already been recorded in colour prior to the strike were then broadcast in black and white. So with ITV going monochrome for an indefinite period of time, how did this affect some of its most successful programmes? Let's start with a classic.
Upstairs Downstairs was an early 20th century drama showcasing the vastly different lives of an upper class family, the Upstairs, and their servants, who often lived downstairs. It was a huge success for ITV, and ran from October of 1971 until the December of 1975. The first series began filming around the time of the colour strike in late 1970, for which ITV's prestigious new drama came directly in the firing line. The first six episodes of Series 1 were shot in black and white due to the strike action, with the remaining seven being filmed in colour as intended. The first episode was eventually reshot in colour for its debut transmission, with the original black and white version believed to have been wiped. Whilst there are no missing episodes of Upstairs Downstairs as such, the impact of the colour strike made exporting the complete series rather difficult for ITV for many years. London Weekend Television was the franchise holder producing the programme, and whilst they were able to sell the drama to many countries, it was often without the five black and white episodes from the first series. Just to give an example, in 1974, LWT sold all available colour episodes over to PBS in the United States. They were only able to sell the monochrome instalments in 1988, over 14 years later. So, whilst today we can enjoy Upstairs Downstairs in its entirety, it is a shame that not all of its 68 episodes could be seen in their full colour splendour. Another drama affected by the colour strike was Yorkshire Television's Hadley. With four series that aired between 1969 and 1976, and a viewership of around 17 million at its peak, the endeavours of James Hadley to correct local injustices had audiences glued to the screen. Most of its first series was made and transmitted in black and white, making the jump to colour in the final three episodes, which aired in November and December of 1969, in line with several ITV regions switching to full-time colour broadcasts. With the second series in production, just as with Upstairs Downstairs, the colour strike would see several episodes of Hadley air in black and white as opposed to the colour it had recently introduced. In the end, episodes 1, 2, 8, 9 and 13 of series 2 were made and shown in monochrome between January and April of 1971. However, some colour did make its way to the screen, albeit in a rather odd and unintentional way. Location sequences were still shot on colour film, but as they made their way to the mixing desk, the colour signal would be switched off so that recording to tape in monochrome could begin. However, the results weren't quite perfect. Certain film sequences in Series 2 of Hadley showcase a pale array of colours, or primary colours either being present or absent in certain shots. All 52 episodes of Hadley are available to watch today, but just like with Upstairs Downstairs, the colour strike was able to leave its mark on one of ITV's most successful hits of the 1970s. Finally, let's round off with the other side's biggest programme, Coronation Street. Starting in 1960, viewers around the country grew to love the goings-on on the cobbles and catching up on all the latest drama and gossip at the Rovers' return. But just shy of the programme's 10th birthday, several changes would have to be made in response to the colour strike. Corrie was first advertised and seen in colour in November of 1969, and by the time 1970 rolled in, episodes were being routinely shot and shown in colour to those who could receive it. The first episode to be affected by the colour strike would be episode 1025, which was recorded in colour, but was shown in black and white on the 16th of November, 1970. From this point up until episode 1051, all episodes of Coronation Street would be recorded and transmitted in monochrome, with all of that new expensive colour equipment going unused for months. Finally, in the February of 1971, Corey returned to recording and transmitting in full colour, after a three-month lapse back into the world of black and white. However, monochrome footage would last appear in the programme with episode 1055, in which pre-filmed inserts, recorded during the strike, were shot and transmitted in black and white, the remainder of the programme being shown in colour. A sort of odd mix and match situation, but the last instance of black and white footage being used in Coronation Street, aside from flashback sequences, would be seen on the 24th of February 1971. But if anything, the batch of episodes from late 1970 to early 1971 showcase that even the biggest hits of the day couldn't escape the impact of the colour strike. So with every ITV region back to broadcasting in black and white, what did the colour strike actually mean for ITV? Well, in regards to the audience, it could be argued that little damage was done. As mentioned, the introduction of colour meant the production of new televisions that could receive a colour signal. These sets were vastly more expensive compared to a monochrome receiver, and it would take several years for the British public to fully convert and purchase colour television packages. In 1970, it's estimated that around 5% of UK television owners possessed a colour-capable set. So, by the time the strike began, 
the majority of viewers would have noticed little difference. The reality was, the majority of the UK were still consuming television content in black and white, with colour television remaining an item of great expense for several years. Indeed, it wouldn't be until around 1976 before colour televisions would start outselling monochrome ones. Keep in mind as well, whilst the BBC had a full colour service running on both of its channels by the dawn of the 70s, ITV had some serious catching up to do across its network. Only four of the 15 ITV regions kicked over to full-time colour services on the 15th of November 1969, these being ATV, Granada, Yorkshire and LWT. Thames would follow two days later on the 17th of November, and Southern and Scottish television would be the final stations to introduce full colour in 1969, doing so on the 13th of December. As 1970 rolled in, HTV would begin their colour service on the 4th of April, with Tyne Tees following suit on the 17th of July. The last two stations to ring in colour before the strike would be Ulster and Anglia, who did so on the 14th of September and the 1st of October respectively. This left four ITV regions in which a colour service wasn't even available when the strike began on the 13th of November. And sure enough, when the strike ended, they still didn't have colour. Westwood would finally bid farewell to Monochrome on the 22nd of May 1971, Border doing so a few months later on the 1st of September. Grampian would become the penultimate franchise to bring in colour, doing so on the 30th of September 1971, which just left Channel as the sole franchise of the ITV network to not be broadcasting a full-time colour service. After several complications, they would finally be able to do so on the 26th of July 1976, thus finally bringing the ITV network to complete colour broadcasting across all regions and franchises, nearly seven years after setting that plan into motion. But reverting to the strike, in summary, Four regions weren't getting colour television whatsoever beforehand, and in the 11 regions that were, a very small fraction of their viewer bases actually had the means to watch the colour programming. So for many UK viewers, the colour strike came and went, with them noticing little difference in their regularly scheduled programming. But make no mistake, this doesn't mean that ITV as a whole didn't suffer from the fallout. The primary concern raised by the colour strike was unsurprisingly centred around income. The switch back to broadcasting solely in monochrome would mean ITV would be unable to sell airtime at a higher value, for which colour broadcast demanded. In a way, I imagine this gave advertisers a bit of respite, as they were able to buy commercial time for a lower rate than those dictated by a full-time colour service. Furthermore, the other side would face increased difficulty in exporting its programmes overseas if a black and white option was the only one available to buyers. While several smaller countries were still broadcasting in monochrome, many of the largest television markets began purchasing imported programmes that were made in colour only. As mentioned, several episodes of Upstairs Downstairs were left unpurchased for years, for the simple fact that they weren't in colour, and those countries that were willing to purchase black and white material would do so at a lower rate, again affecting ITV's income. Like with any bout of industrial action, the broadcasters involved wanted an end to it, and after nearly three months, ITV were finally ready to once again sit with members of the ACTT to try and put an end to the colour strike once and for all. After many negotiations, the strike was called off on the 2nd of February 1971. Union members had accepted a deal with ITV, in which those involved would see a 4% rise backdated to July of 1970, with some grades even going as far back as November 1969. However, due to the deal needing to be ratified and accepted across all the regions, the recording and transmission of colour programmes wouldn't start up again until almost a week later, on the 8th of February 1971. The colour strike was over but the fallout from it would be present on television screens sporadically for the rest of the year. Those programmes that had to be recorded in monochrome were still transmitted as such, some of them going out as late as December 1971, over a year from when the strike initially took place. But even as colour continued to become the norm across the UK, the unions wouldn't be fully satisfied for long. Throughout the 1970s, bouts of industrial action would plague the nation's two leading broadcasters, with tensions arguably reaching their peak for ITV, in the strike to end all strikes that took place in 1979. But whilst that event is well remembered, where does the colour strike sit in UK television history? For those who were around in those few months between 1970 and 1971, the advent of the colour strike may have passed them by completely, with programming continuing uninterrupted and the severe lack of households that possessed a colour television set, viewers sat and enjoyed their shows as they would normally, seldom realising that behind the scenes it was anything but a happy occasion. The blip back to the days of monochrome seems so sudden given how new the full-time colour service was for ITV back then. The dawn of a new televisual age seemingly about to be scuppered and drawn back by workers who believe they deserve better. 
For now renowned classics like Hadley and Upstairs Downstairs, a small section of their output will forever bear the impact of the colour strike. For the other side's biggest hitter, Coronation Street, its transition to colour promptly halted for months on end, proving that even the most popular programmes of the day couldn't escape the consequences of industrial action. For ITV, the loss of potential revenue gained from colour transmissions seemingly became too much to bear, and for both them and the BBC, they would continue to battle frequently with the unions for the remainder of the 1970s. So next time you're sitting down to watch your favourite programme, maybe you'll not just see colour as a guaranteed given, because just over 50 years ago, that spectacular, groundbreaking new colour that you were watching on the brand new fancy TV you'd spent a fortune on could have been taken away from you by the flick of a switch. <laughs>